they have a narrative, right? This is that's the thing. There is a narrative. There is a push for veganism. And like I've said before, when you're looking at plant-based proteins, this is just a fact that's out there. If you're having pea protein as opposed to animal protein, it's just for one example, or kale, but the absorption rate is significantly lower of grams of protein. So it's something like if you take in 50 grams of protein, just like by consuming it, you're going to be absorbing a significantly higher amount of the animal-based protein as opposed to the plant protein, which in the end means that you got to eat way more calories of plant protein, which is going to be a lot harder. Hello there, I'm Cardone from Lee Healers Sports Massage, and today I want to actually talk to you about a study that came out, and it went viral like crazy on the internet on October 19th, just this past Thursday, and I thought it was really interesting because it was like a Harvard study, and I don't want to get too much into it. I actually think everything that I noticed about it, also Dr. Sean Baker uh, noticed about it. So I want to actually do a commentary on that video and just discuss my feelings towards the study and what Dr. Baker's findings were and discuss it as uh, in the eyes of the doctor, not as much in my eyes. You know, I read a lot about the meat lifestyle and high protein because I've been working out for at least the last 20 years now, pretty consistently, except for like that one year period during COVID. But COVID knocked everybody out of everything. So that, that's another story for another time. All right, so I'm going to open this up on another screen. So now this is it. We're looking at... Yep, all right. Let me just make this full screen. So this is the him looking at red meat. The title of it said, hold on, red meat gives you diabetes. A new study. Ooh, diabetes. Let's see what Dr. Baker has to say. All right, red meat gives you diabetes, right? So this is, uh, you know, if you were to pay attention to the latest headlines, a new study from Harvard University uh, comes out showing that uh, eating, you know, two servings of red meat per week, per week, <laughs> is associated with higher rates of diabetes. And two servings? That's it? So sometimes... Of these American style plates, I know I'm guilty of it. Two servings, maybe you have three servings of meat on your plate, three servings of rice and beans or whatever it is. But yeah, okay there. Uh huh. This is something I've never heard of before. Sugar leads to diabetes. Come on. All right, let's continue. What happens with this study? Well, it gets national headlines. It's on the front page of every major media outlet. You've probably already heard of it if you haven't. You will hear of it. Uh, this is typically what we see. Uh, we contrast that to uh, not long ago, a study from Harvard University showed people going on a basically an all meat carnivore diet reversed their diabetes. Did that get national headlines? Was that on the front page of every major news media outlet? Uh, yeah, he's of so right. It. You see, it's like you're looking at it and they're like, oh, yeah, we have this one study. It gets blasted October 19th everywhere. But then you have a study like this where it's showing that it actually reversed issues and uh, no major publications. Uh, wh what gives? It wasn't because we have this narrative driven, uh, you know, belief around nutrition that we're going to, you know, everybody's going to be eating the damn bugs and the soy and all other crap. And so. If we look at, first of all, the author, you know, one of the major authors, Walter Willett, he has numerous conflicts of interest, which are, of course, not declared, but he is, you know, basically financially benefiting from this push towards, you know, grain based. You know. Look at that. So, first off, yeah, he's right. There's no way you're going to get me to eat crickets. Um, there's going to be problems. Actually, I've looked into this in extensive um, research. But also, I have a video that you can actually watch after we're done with this talking about bugs. But one of the the problems is that it, the exoskeletons, it actually has an adverse effects on our digestive tract. So it actually makes us sicker to eat uh, bug protein rather than animal-based protein. So, But yeah, look at this guy. Dr. Willett has conflicts of interest looking at what's on the screen on uh, this screen right here it says he's advocated for a vegetarian diet including little to no red meat consumption since 1990 1991 in recent years he's been leaning towards veganism 
Oh, wow. So in the last few years of uh, his directorship at the Harvard T.S. Chan School of Public Health, he received, it looks like, near $1.5 million from companies or groups interested in promoting vegan products or vegetarian diet generally. The school also received 350 k and 950 k from pharmaceutical companies, which would presumably not benefit from a nutritional solution to chronic disease. Of course, if you're eating right, that's the nutritional solution to chronic disease, as it says right there on the screen. Not my words. You can see it right here. If you just zoom in on this, uh, Dr. Willett, uh, numerous potential conflicts of interest. I'll see if I can find the link and just leave it in the description for everybody. Um, other things it says there, he's a scientific advisor to at least seven groups, commercial enterprises that promote high grain vegetarian diets. It's also another bullet point. He's been closely involved in numerous commercial ventures with David Katz, a prominent promoter of vegetarian diet who received millions from food companies. Will it, if ever, real, will it rarely, if ever, discloses these potential conflicts of interest? So that's crazy. That's reading more about this. Uh, let's continue. You know, peas and nut, nut type of diet. Uh, he gets funding from those places and has, like I said, you know, commercial interest in, in that type of uh, uh, diet being popularized, right? And so if we look at the study again. It's epidemiology. So what do they do? They ask a bunch of people, "What do you think? You, what do you think you remember you ate over a period of time? You know, whatever it might be." Of course, that is always inaccurate. It's always, always, always inaccurate data. That's un. un yeah, getting people to remember what they ate as opposed to them keeping an actual food journal is going to be a huge difference in results, and you're going to have a lot more accuracy if you're putting in a food journal. I know some people, when I was a trainer, I tell them to keep a food journal just to, you know, see and be more responsible with what they're eating, and I know it's painful. I've gotten that feedback before. It's painful for a lot of people, but if you want to understand what you're putting into yourself, do a food journal. Don't do it off of your memory because it's just going to, it's not going to be accurate, but let's continue here what uh, he has to say. Un undeniable. Of course, there's all the potential confounders, uh, you know, you know, processed meat, larger effect than unprocessed meat. What, what, what is it about processed meat? Well, it's got other stuff in it that's not meat, right? So that has a larger effect potentially, you know, what it yeah, and some of those things that are in processed meat. I like to think of like plant-based diet as it comes from a plant, and that includes like a processing plant, and that includes plant-based meat. And there's they found like seed oils, and they find other things in there. I just remember seed oils being in there, which is completely bad for your health in another way, which we could get into in a future video. Make sure you subscribe if you're enjoying what you're uh, hearing so far. Like this video as well. And uh, let's continue on with this. Is unprocessed meat what well, could be a hamburger from McDonald's with, with your Coca-Cola and your French fries and the bun and the you know the, the disgusting uh, sauces they put on there? You know, you also have to look the bun. If you, I've seen videos in the past where they look at the sugar content of like a normal bun you'd buy in a grocery store and then the sugar content in a McDonald's bun. And, oh, my God, is it significantly more sugar? Then you have sugar in the sauces. Uh, there's a lot of sugar in places. So if you're having Big Macs, yeah, it's not the meat that's doing it. It's the amount of sugar. And just look at the facts. The facts will give you that information. Sugar-based, seed oil-based sauces. So... Uh, you know, and then the, the confounders, what else were they eating? Well, how much exercise? You know, and they said, well, we do a multivariate analysis and we account for that. Well, do they really? Do they account for it accurately? How do we even know it's accurate? What percentage of it? You see, because one study, just one scientific study could be messed with. There could be factors that are manipulated to skewer the results in the favor that you want. And that's why you have to look at a meta-analysis, see a whole bunch of scientific studies, because you're hoping in that sense that not every single study will be messed with. And if it's wide enough, then it's going to be just statistically impossible for it to be messed with. So you want to look at a meta-analysis. You have one study and it, cut, it skewers in a totally different direction. It's not that that's groundbreaking science. You need Need to see who's paying for it you need to look at the details around it who's funding it what money influences what people are influencing it and then conduct other studies so that way you do enough and you come to a consensus in the end that is most logical the impact is exercise is 12 percent is it 16 percent is it 19 percent they just kind of make that stuff up you know based on best guesses so again guess plus guess plus guess gives us outcome we write a big headline, and of course, of course, in that article, the appeal to the climate, right? Oh, we're going to save the planet by having people 
stop eating meat and eating friggin' insects or whatever the hell they want us to eat. Uh, more of the same stuff, you know, and, and yet I see literally every single day people going on damn near exclusive red meat diets, you know, and their diabetes goes away. How does... I've seen that, and I've read a lot of studies about it. I haven't seen it firsthand, but you do see the testimonials. You can find Twitter. I mean, you just follow the, uh, Sean Baker, and then you see he reposts those testimonials all the time, and I just hear people about it all the time, and I'm not going to be against it. In fact, I go animal-based, but looking at this, which it's probably a little small on your screen, I'll just read this, but the search result for diabetes, improved inflammation and diabetes on the carnivore diet. A hesitant beginning, Mitch never imagined himself diving into a carnivore diet. It's not that he's dismissive of alternative diets. He just never felt a strong pull towards one. But after a bout of gastrointestinal issues and after hearing about it from a friend, his curiosity peaks. First impressions on the carnivore diet. Walking into the supermarket for the first, and that's where it cuts off. It looks like it comes from carnivore.diet. I didn't know carnivore.diet. I'll have to look that up a little bit later. But yeah. I'll research that, but yeah, it seems like it's a it's a good article, and we're also talking about the benefits of carnivore diet, and when you go high protein, you better be eating those uh, animal-based proteins. It's, there's a whole bunch of reasons. Something that cures something also be the cause of it. It makes no sense. It's illogical. Uh, it's absolute nonsense. You know, I'm going I'm to interview, you know, just in a few hours, I'm going to interview a gal who literally has lost 450 pounds. In a relatively short period of time. By actually, I saw that one. That was actually on his. Uh, it was the same day that this article came out, if I remember correctly, or the day before. So that would make it either Wednesday or Thursday on October eighteenth or nineteenth. And her story is actually really amazing, losing nearly four hundred pounds on a carnivore diet, which means she must have been in excess, either nearly five hundred or just over five hundred. Because you know, after losing four hundred, you have to have at least a hundred something pounds in your frame. Hmm. Going carnivore and guess what happened to her diabetes? You know, as you might expect, it got better and went away. Um, yeah, anyway, this is it. I mean, you guys can see them. You can, you guys can, you watch out in real time. They have a narrative, right? This is, that's the thing. There is a narrative, there is a push for veganism, and like I've said before, when you're looking at plant-based proteins, this is just a fact that's out there. If you're having pea protein as opposed to animal protein, it's just for one example, or kale, but the absorption rate is significantly lower of grams of protein. So it's something like if you take in 50 grams of protein, just like by consuming it, you're going to be absorbing a significantly higher amount of the animal-based protein as opposed to the plant protein, which in the end means that you got to eat way more calories of plant protein, which is going to be a lot harder. This is what gets headlines, and a lot of people will be influenced by that. You guys won't, fortunately, but we have to counter that narrative. We have to get out the information. You know, if you want to test if red meat causes diabetes. Now, yeah, I read a whole bunch of testimonials about that, and I'm not going to say that I've cured myself, but... I didn't have any problems going in when I started eating more animal-based and just consuming a lot more meat and dairy and eggs. But there was noticeable changes in my body, aside from just gaining muscle mass, just having more energy throughout the day and not having to eat multiple times in a day like grazing. I'm comfortable eating twice a day if there's enough protein in that meal. So, uh, yeah, there's a number of reasons that it improves your lifestyle. Something that literally reverses diabetes at, at the same time be the cause of diabetes. It's absolutely nonsense. Uh, it's the typical stuff we see. Uh, you know, we had a, a, a huge article came out last year. Red meat is not a problem. All these previous studies were based on bad science, shoddy science. And so what do we do? We make more bad, shoddy science. I mean, it's, it's like they don't learn the lesson. They're just going to keep producing this because this is what their sponsors are paying them for, right? It really is. It's it's something else. But when you're looking at the dollars and cents, you see that if they're giving you bad food, as we just saw from something earlier in this video, if they're giving you bad food, then it's going to get you sick. And if you're sick, then you're going to have to go to the doctors and the pharmaceutical companies to make you better. So you see how if money flows in certain ways that 
<laughs> the interests are going to change immensely. So you have to make sure that you understand this. And question, like I've said before, you question everything. So that way you can really get to the bottom of it. If we've been living thousands of years consuming meat and all of a sudden now they're looking at these studies, question it. See where that money comes from. So shoddy science, garbage, ignore, ignore, ignore. Listen to what actual happens in reality in your life, not what Harvard wants you to know or you know, the New York Times wants you to know or somebody else who wants you to basically be a, you know, forever surf, right? We want you guys just to shut up. Woo, he said a forever surf. Too poor and too weak to get yourself free. That is, ooh, hoo, 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 that's surf, uh, S. E R F, not S U R F for those of you that might not know. But damn, woo, that's something else. Up, keep grazing, keep consuming our products while we uh and, and be you know happy with with less while we Yeah, you see that's something else he's talking about. That whole you will have less protein, you will not own property, and you'll be happy. Uh uh uh. Now, if you were wondering why it jumped and it missed certain parts. That's because there's going to be a Rumble and Odyssey version of this video exclusively. Because, you know, not everything should go into a uh, YouTube video. So if you want to see the whole thing, just make sure you find Elite Healers on Rumble or Odyssey. And stay tuned for more videos because I'm going to be talking about recovery. But I also get a little bit into this commentary because I find it so just so important. Because the way the events are these days, we need to have discussions on both sides of the aisle. and. I live the health lifestyle. A personal trainer for a number of years, massage therapist turned sports and medical massage therapist. This is my life. This is the, this is I exercise, I eat protein, and I help people recover better and faster and this is my lifestyle. So, I have to talk about this information. So, stay tuned for more and if you want to watch something fun and talk about more carnivore stuff, watch this video over here. If not, I'm certain you're going to like this video over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.